Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show, Learning Through Life Experiences. You must have heard the song, Soldier, soldier, mithi baaten bol kar dil ko chura le gaya. Ji haan, today we have a soldier with us, Mr. Anil Malik. Mr. Anil Malik has served in Indian Army for more than 38 years. And today, we are going to get some inspiration from this great soldier of this soil. Mr. Anil Malik, welcome to the show. Thank you, Dr. Alima. It's a great pleasure to be here. Uh, life's experiences are only worth it if you're able to share with the others. And, uh, and I've had a very eventful career, a very satisfying experiences. And uh, I've achieved a lot of my vision and dreams that I started off life. So, you know, uh, we have we have high regards for the soldiers, for the people who have served uh, for, the, for our country. And we always salute them. So first of all, accept my salute. Because Thank you. It's a great honor to be uh, to get that recognition. Um, so, Mr. Anil uh, Malik, first of all, tell me that what was the inspiration? Why did you join Indian Army and you didn't take any other job? Dr. Halima, to start with, I was born into an army family. My father served uh, in the army for uh, nearly 34 years. So, for me, life's every step was seeing what the armed forces was all about, what challenges the armed forces go through. And also I realized and saw the kind of value systems that the armed forces bring upon into you. So right from childhood, I always felt that if there is a career to choose, a career where you are, you get respect for your actions, where you are able to contribute towards uh, the nation, you are able to contribute towards society. The correct. That's kind really of great. Yes, that's really great oh. to know. So, Mr. Yeah. Anil, so, uh, when you were a child, from since your childhood, you saw your father working in the army, and you are right now said that it was quite challenging. So, as a child, by nature, you were a child who accept the challenges, or you were very brave, bold, courageous or uh, somebody has uh, like inspired you or forced you to go into this profession? No, it was, uh, in fact, nobody, in fact, uh, in fact, my mother was much against my going getting into the armed force because after all, she actually faced the challenges. For us, it was more adventure. It was more uh, the dignity that goes with the, being in the armed forces. It was more the, uh, be able to face the realities of life. So for, for me, it was always that I, I got my inspiration from my father. I also got inspiration from his colleague, his uh, peers, who, who were facing the same challenges. You know, uh, I remember as a young child, my father was posted at a place called Uri, uh, which uh, you may have heard of. It, it's been in the news and, and they named a movie also called Uri. Right. So those are the kind of areas that we lived in, we grew up as a child, we saw that the armed forces, besides the normal duty of looking after your borders, making sure they're, they are safe, also contributed a lot to society. The way, right from the beginning, we saw villages, poor villagers being adopted, the school children being taken care of. That is a culture which has been there. Yes. That, that army, culture army was culture there. Is always, army culture is always considered as a very highly cultured people in army. They have lots of etiquettes. They have lots of mannerism in them. They have their own culture, their own, uh, uh, they have developed their own uh, culture among themselves. And army people are considered to be the highest civilized people of the country. You know, it's always very heartening to hear that. You know, uh, a lot of labels of integrity, uh, compassion, are are labeled with the armed forces. And it's, it's, it is not only in, uh, in our country, but all across the globe. Every armed forces have so much of, because the armed forces are there for you everywhere. You don't have to wait for, for a war. 
So you retired from the second highest position, Lieutenant General. So how do you feel, Mr. Anil, that you have served the country from the second highest position of the army? Yeah, you know, uh, I feel that, first of all, as I said, I had a dream to be able to contribute, which I did, which I was able to achieve. I also realized that getting to these kind of positions, while it gives you more awareness, it gives you more commitment, it gives you more, and you are able, you are now in a position to pass on those values and cultures to all the younger generations who are growing up. You know, the young, youngest soldier. Uh, 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 let me take a minute to explain this point. The soldier comes from the same strata of society, which you and me do. He grows up in the same village. He goes through the same hardships, walks to school. Yet, once he's in the armed forces, those things, his own home, his own wife, his own children become secondary. It Not is the country is the first. It is the commitment to the honor and security of your country, which acquires things. And it takes a lot of effort to make, motivate a man. I don't, I don't think there's anything, any greater motivation in life than to motivate a man to give up his life. Every morning when the soldier steps out of his billet or from his tent, he knows that he may not return today. But it takes a lot of things. This is so highest that, highest level of loyalty for the country that requires. Yes. yes, and and that is the reason why that even when we are at those positions, our job entails making sure that they are given they are ensured the wherewithal to be able to withstand the pressures. They are able to be we are able to motivate them, and motivation comes from the fact they know that tomorrow, even if they don't return, this organization called the Armed Forces is going to look after their children look after their families and their bond and the family's uh, culture which exists in the army, whether it's a soldier or a general's wife, they bond together. Right? And that is why I always maintain that the armed forces are not a job. They're not a profession, right? They are what I call a way of life. That's true. Or, uh, to put, and to put it in uh, Hindi, Yes, that's the you exact can what I was what... looking for. It's a junoon, it's a passion. And that yes, only so drives not... you towards, go towards your death. In other words, we can say that you every morning you are going towards your death. And that really requires lots of junoon. So I want to see okay. Lieutenant, uh, uh, Lieutenant uh, General. Um, I want to see Mr. Anil as a child. And as a young boy who has lots of dream in his eyes and a young boy who is very passionate. So I want to see that Mr. Anil. Will you please show me that? Right. Now, as I said, as a child, I, I was, I was always very forthcoming. A child who loved fun, who loved adventure. Okay. I, uh, but yet I always right from the, from a childhood developed that high degree of compassion. Compassion for, for the people, for a normal human being, right? That both the culture of uh, the high moral values that one I imbibed as a child and this uh, feeling of compassion made me work towards it. I, I, I studied in most, most of the time I studied in, uh, in schools which uh, were run by the army. Uh, of course, I had in different and uh, it was a school, uh, career, a schooling which went through every two years. You're in a different place. Every two years, you have a new teacher. Uh, to, to, today, I'm in uh, Shimla. Next day, I'm in uh, Ambala. Third day, I'm in the Northeast. So so in the this process, you developed your interpersonal skills. Yes. So uh, the kind of relationships that you developed. While somebody may say, okay, so you couldn't have very many friends. But let me tell you, the kind of bonds and the friends I develop as a child, a lot of them are, uh, I'm, I'm in touch with even today, right? We get together even now, and we have so much to talk about the wonderful care 
that we went through. I remember one morning when the war with uh, China had just started. I came home from my, from school and I found that where well, dad hasn't come home. What happened? My mom said, "No, he's moved out to uh, a particular operational area." Okay, for a minute it comes to you. I said, "Oh, my my father's he's got into battle, right?" Oh my God! And then you also feel, I you get that feeling of pride that I am proud to be an army man's son. I am proud. I have that feeling of pride. So that is the kind of culture I've grown up in. And as I moved around in the in my own profession, I, I like I told you, my mother was dead against my joining the army. But then I said, "There's no way. I'm going to be a soldier, and that's what I achieved my mission." No, when you are directing, you know, I am getting like uh, uh, lots of uh, motivation for that, and I am enjoying your adventure. That how uh, the news of coming from the war of, of the war, and then how your mom is so anxious that your father is there, but you are adventurous and you are thinking, okay, one day I will also go and fight like my father is fighting. It's really amazing to listen, and I can feel that uh, the passion for the country in this. So, uh, uh, Daniel, this journey is really very interesting and very motivating. Uh, Dr. Halima, I'd just like to add one point. Yeah. It is not only the borders, the war, it is also day-to-day -day life. The armed forces are part of you. They are part of the society. Yesterday, there were two days back, there were massive floods in Hyderabad, right? The first yes, yes. on the ground for the armed forces. Right? There were massive floods in Mumbai. There have been earthquakes. There have been uh, and and what is thing that uh, service to humanity comes in, right? Well, uh, when the earthquake took place in um, 2005, right? Uh, in the areas where I was talking about early, earlier in Kashmir, in Uri, and all. So the Indian Armed Forces were not only helping their their own countrymen, but even the people across. Right. So, yeah. so it is. It is that feeling of compassion for humanity, which is the greatest asset in the armed forces. Right? So now, after so army, what next? Two thousand three, uh, you left the right. army. Then no, after that, yes. yeah, two thousand thirteen. I. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, it was two thousand thirteen that you left. Yeah, but after that, you know, uh, I felt that I I need to do something useful. I need to start giving back to the no, my own brethren, to the society. So I, I got into this uh, taking some talks and like uh, various things that few schools and colleges. Uh, there's an organization called the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India. They run an orientation program for the young uh, budding chartered accountants. So I used to go and give talks there. And uh, basically, I was looking at uh, on issues like leadership, on motivation, uh, ethics, and values. These are the kind of uh, subjects I was addressing. Uh, in the meantime, uh, after about a year of doing this kind of a thing, and where I was planning to then grow bigger into this field of becoming a formalized trainer, uh, I got an opportunity to work with one of India's leading infrastructure development company. Uh, the company, if, if you're familiar with Mumbai, uh, the greatest landmark which this country had has is the Bandra Valley Sea Link, which, whose picture you see on every. Yes, yes. Uh, yes. So I worked with them for about five years. Uh, I was based out of Delhi. So there we, we settled down in Delhi. Now that I've uh, finished my contract with the company in February this year, just before the lockdown started out, I realized that while I, I have an asset. I have a strength of the training ability, uh, the strength of being able to speak uh, without hesitation. Uh, public speaking is a strength which uh, I felt I had. But I realized that now that uh, we are in a digital era, right, and everything has to be uh, virtual. Virtual. I need that. I need to go through certain uh, awareness. I need to understand how such uh, things can be mastered. How I can carry forward the same message. I, My vision, and like I said, my niche is to 
be able to imbibe certain values, prepare the younger generation to face the challenges of life. They are the leaders of tomorrow. Right. So this younger yes. generation, uh, mentioning you, uh, correctly, you rightly has done uh, that younger generation needs uh, the values to be imbibed by the younger generation. Now, what is the difference you find in this century, like 21st century, and where we have, uh, like, uh, we have gone uh, towards the advancement in the technology, towards the luxuries of life, towards, like, we can see that whatever uh, materials we, do, we didn't have in the past, now we have. But where we have gone wrong, that new generation is not equipped with the values. So what, how, how can you, like what you have to say on this, that why value system is deteriorating in 21st century, if we say. Uh, firstly, Dr. Halima, uh, I won't fully agree with you that the value system is deteriorating. Okay. There were indifferences in value systems even in the old days. Yes, but I perhaps, need to say like respect no, for no, parents I, and yeah, those I, type of things. Yes. No, I, I, I fully, I'm, I fully understand what you're saying. Uh, what has happened is that in the old days when I went to school, right, I could walk to school. Okay, fifteen minutes, twenty minutes, half an hour walk. No public transport, or if there was public, it was uh, far and few. Today, I see my son, when he has to go to school, he, ha he has to travel maybe two hours to uh, get to that school. Okay. Number two, today the amount of material things that are available were not there in our time. Okay. There were no malls. I didn't have to rush that I have to go to the mall. I have to go out to the cinema. We did have cinema far and few. Even in the house, uh, we saw television very late in life. Right? So, if there was no such resource, then what happened? The family would get together. The families would sit together. They would imbibe the values from their elders. There is no better place to imbibe values than in your own. In the family. The family is the first place. And then we say the schools and all have to contribute, right? But exactly. basically, today, how much time is that child able to spend with his parents? Or even if, the, he, even if he can spare some time, either mom is busy or father is busy or the elder brother and sister are busy, it, which each one has got different challenges. I always believe that families which eat together live together. Live right? together. That's true. Yes. Right? Yeah, now, you today, are today, absolutely today, right. Yes. Today, uh, the dietitian yeah. Yeah, yeah, please. Today the, diet, today, the dietitian tells you, don't have your dinner at 7 o'clock. Okay. If you want to eat a healthy life. But your child is coming back from work at 10 o'clock at night. Yes. So either you wait till 10, and then make sure that everybody sits together and eat. Or yeah, there's no option, but you eat and then the child comes. Either you're sleeping or the child has uh, got to eat alone. So that bonding of the families is first of all. Different. Then there were these, okay, even if you did not have a time, everybody lived in a joint family. Right? The joint family system was such that the, the grandparents, maybe the great grandparents, some of those who are lucky were there to invite certain values. They would, and a lot, a lot of things are learned by just watching. The, now the question of is, yes, now the question is that joint family is not there. We have time constraint. Like uh, the new generation is into such uh, professions where lots of time demanding professions are there. So that is the main reason that somewhere we have to find these gaps and we have yes. to try to fulfill those gaps. Yes. How, and then, do you, how do you look at COVID-19? Because the people are saying that because of COVID-19, the life is shattered. Now everything is, has gone down and now there is no life left at all. The people are like very disappointed and they talk uh, very ill about COVID-19. They are, they are thinking negatively. How do you look at COVID-19? First thing, COVID-19 has uh, supported the point that I was making earlier. Yes. It's the first time you see families together. Right? Yeah, that's 
Okay. So, so there's a lot of time. Earlier you said, I don't have time to read, right? Today you got all the time to read. Earlier you said that I, I don't have time to even talk to my children. Today you've got all the time to talk to your children. So let's look at the positives, right? You, you can take care of each other, you care for each other's health. So some of those value systems, which we are referring to, are perhaps COVID-19 has helped us uh, get back into those Yes, systems. in a great deal. Yeah, but they, this, is a, this is a big challenge. It's a challenge the whole world is facing. There are no shortcuts to it. But then also there are very simple answers. We've also seen over the last uh, eight, nine, uh, eight months since the, uh, sorry, seven months since the COVID-19 has come in, that uh, if, if you take the right precautions, what does it say? Eat healthy food, right? So build up your immunity. Take precautions. Okay. Don't get too close to somebody. Uh, cover your face. Right? Maybe wash your hands. Wash your hands in any case a good habit. No? So, so if you follow those things, build up your immunity, follow these very simple uh, things, so, uh, a Lieutenant he, General, he, Mr. Anil, uh, is very uh, just one, Yeah, Dr. Aliva, just one point on this. I think the pollution in Delhi has dropped so much when this COVID-19, yes. for the first time, you could, first time in Delhi, after ages, you saw clear blue sky. Yes. You found a lot, 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 yes. lot of the birds which had disappeared are back here. Yeah. But uh, I finally want to tell you or just one statement I want to make. My vision is to be able to bring back to society. I want the younger generation to develop that feeling of change their attitude to develop certain norms, values, give back to society. Be prepared to take the challenges of life. We make good engineers, we make top class lawyers, we've got top class uh, doctors, but what is most important is to become top class human beings, mm -hmm. and for that is what my mission is to be able to spread that mission, uh, to spread that idea of being good human beings before you become doctors or scientists. That you will become in any case. Thank you very much. It was really fantastic talking to you, and then. Uh... And due to the time limitations, we have to stop here. But it was really very inspiring, the story of your life. And uh, this is called like real learning when we learn from the life experiences of such great personality like you. And uh, I request the audience, whosoever is watching this program, that kindly contact uh, Lieutenant uh, uh, Anil Malik ji if you have any questions, any queries, any advice you need, because now he is fully dedicated towards a young generation, guiding them, shaping their future. And it is a great uh, a help for our young generation. So thank you very much, Mr. Anil Malik ji. And I hope that you enjoy your new journey of shaping the future of the new generation. Thank you, Dr. Anima. It's a great pleasure. Uh, for firstly, uh, gratitude for having given me the platform to share my message. And uh, it's your uh, questions were so inspiring. And uh, I would say, maybe bring out the responses which I want to do. So, so well structured and modulated. Thank you very much. Great pleasure. Thank you very much. And uh, stay blessed always. May Almighty bless you. Thank you.